Hi there, this is Unmesh from Pix Imperfect. How are you doing? I hope you're having a fantastic day and turning this day into a happy one. Know that happiness is a choice and sometimes it can be a very hard choice indeed. But trust me, it's immensely worth it. Well, in this video, I'm going to share with you a new feature or a new button that you can use for better hair selections in Photoshop. And also as a bonus, I'm going to share with you how to instantly match your subject with colorful backdrops. So without any further ado, let's get started. Back in the magical world of Photoshop, and if you wish to go ahead and download any of the photos or backdrops to follow along, check the links in the description. Now, do keep in mind that these images are licensed from Envato Elements, but still, you can always download a free preview with watermarks for practice. All right, before we make any selection, what is the first thing we do? We have a backup, and to do that, we make a duplicate. So, with the background layer selected, press Ctrl or Command J to make a duplicate of the background layer, and double click on the text of that layer to rename it. Let's name this subject. Now, let's have a temporary backdrop and I'm doing this to explain to you a concept. All right, so let's create a solid color adjustment layer just above the background and below the subject. All right, and let's choose any color there is. Now, let's go to the subject. Now, there are two approaches from here. You can either, first of all, let's select one of these three tools, which is the object selection tool, the quick selection or the magic wand. Only with these three tools, you will see select subject at the top. And by the way, the feature that we're going to talk about only exists in the later versions of Photoshop. So the first approach is clicking on select subject and going from there. And the second approach is clicking on select and mask and doing everything inside of it. Now it's up to you what you prefer. Let's press Ctrl or Command D because I prefer doing everything inside select and mask. So let's click on that. Now inside of this, we have view. This is the foremost important thing while you're selecting here. You need to decide beforehand what kind of background you're going to put the subject in. Sometimes for certain brighter colors, you need to select more. And sometimes for certain darker colors, you need to select less. So this helps you visualize how your mask is going to look on the new background. And that's why I created a solid color adjustment layer. So if you want to see the new background real time, select onion skin from view. What onion skin does is that, for example, I select the subject by clicking on select subject. Right now, the subject is masked. And if the transparency is at 100, only the things which are masked or is white in a mask is going to show up. If the transparency is zero, everything is going to show up. Make sense now? All right, let's increase the transparency to 100 and we're going to do it on white. So you want to see how this mask will look on a white background. We'll come to colorful later. For now, let's choose white. So as you can see, there are lots of discrepancies right here. And that is where this new feature comes into play. So if the selections are not satisfactory, this is what you can try. And that is called the refine mode. So let's zoom in and examine the hair mask right over here. There are two refine modes for us. If it works perfectly, you can leave it the way it is. If it doesn't, you can try the other one anyway. So just click on color aware and have a look what better selection it makes. Again, let's do it in this area again. So this is object aware and this is color aware. Now, again, it depends upon image to image. You need to go ahead and try both. See what works best for you. So that is the additional amazing technique that I wanted to talk to you about. If that's the only thing you wanted to learn, please feel free to move on to another video. Don't forget to watch other awesome hair selection videos on Fix Imperfect. If you wish to stick around, we will also learn some tips and tricks along the way and also a technique to match the subject along with the hair to colorful backdrops. So if you're still here, thank you so very much. And I absolutely love you. So that now we have a better selection. There are still some discrepancies. Have a look. A little bit of the background is peeking through the hair. So how do we take care of that? Simple. Select the Refine Edge tool and just paint on the areas where the background is peeking through. That's all. And if there are certain hair strands that Photoshop missed out, paint on those areas as well. There you go. Looks just wonderful, doesn't it? And by the way, if you're wondering, Unmesh, this was such a simple background to remove. Yes, I agree with that. But if you do want to remove a busy background, you do definitely need to go in and manually paint in. Because let's say that in the background, you have lots of leaves and grass and fine strands of bushes and all that stuff that look like hair. How do you expect Photoshop or any other AI to tell the difference between what is human hair 
and what is tree hair? Maybe the AI will get much better in the future and I'm sure it will, but for now, this is what we are stuck with. So once you're satisfied, hit OK. Now it looks good on a white background. Now if we create a mask with this background, this just doesn't look all right. So how do we fix that? Let's get back to that later and move on to our second example. Similarly, I wanted to illustrate this to you. So let's make a copy of the background layer by pressing Ctrl or Command J and have a look at the background. It is a little bluish in color and the hair is a little more warmer, yellowish in color. So if we go to select and mask and click on select subject and first of all, let's change the view to on white and in the refine mode, if we choose color aware, if we let Photoshop be aware of the color differences, the mask would be so much better in this case. So just by simply choosing color aware, have a look at the difference. So this is object aware and this is color aware. You see that? Now it has selected a little bit of the extras of the background. If you want to avoid that, you can try clicking on refine here. It digs a little inside and have a look at improves upon that. So that's one more tip. Advantages of staying with Pix Imperfect. Thank you so much. I shouldn't get too arrogant. You know, you should watch every other resource out there. And by the way, you always have the option to drag down and shift the edge right or left to select more or less. Once you're satisfied, just hit OK. That's all. Now, what about colorful backgrounds? Now, we already talked about a wonderful technique to correct these halos in this video. So please do go ahead and watch it if you want to learn that technique. In this video, we will learn another matching technique, but please don't miss that video. That is essential. So let's bring in an interesting colorful background. So let's go to our Finder or Explorer and I'm just going to drag in and drop in this backdrop. By the way, this is wonderful for landing pages. Let's make it a little larger. Let's fit it to the canvas. And now let's drag it under the subject. Here we are seeing the same problem. And the reason is very simple. The hair is so thin that it takes up the color of the existing background. The same happens with fur. So the previous background in this case was gray. Have a look. And the hair, even though it is golden brownish, if we zoom into these strands, have a look, it is gray, right? And if you look at the mask here, the mask is perfect. It's taking up most of the strands. Now I want you to imagine a situation where this lady is actually in this background. What do you think the strands would do? they would be like dark strands over it. They won't brighten the thing. So what is the blend mode which darkens stuff? You already know it. It's in the darken group. So you can choose anything from the darken group, but I love multiply because it provides a very smooth and natural gradient. So let's go with multiply and have a look. Everything looks perfect, but the subject doesn't. Along with the dark strands of hair on the edge, the bright parts of the image are also becoming see-through. Why? because multiply is a blend mode which hides everything that is 100% white and follows that gradient. The more the brighter it is, the more hidden it will be with multiply. So we need to bring back the bright areas. For that, make a copy of the subject layer by pressing Ctrl or Command J and this time change the blend mode from multiply to normal. But we do want to keep multiply in the dark areas because the hair strands along the edge are dark. So what do we do? We use blend if. So double click on the right hand side of the layer and let's hide this bright parts by taking the slider of this layer from left to right. We are removing the dark areas of this layer from this layer. All right. Now this is going to be very harsh. So hold the alt key or the option key, click on the slider to break it apart and take it all the way apart. There you go. Now if you wish to do some adjustments, you can do the adjustments with the slider on the right. You can control it as to how much you want. I'm going to keep it about this much and that feels all right. Hit OK. Now this looks perfect. The subject is also wonderfully matching, but there is one problem with it. The texture of the background is also peeking through. We only wanted an average color of the background. So how do we get an environmental ambient color of the background and not the details? Simple. <laughs> Remove the details in that area. So simply make a copy of the abstract background layer. And let's simply blur it. You guessed that right. Let's go to filter, blur, and then Gaussian blur. About 500 is fine. And all of the details are gone. And we are getting all the colors in a nice gradient. Hit OK. And we only want it blurred out in the subject area. So hold the Alt key or the Option key and drag and drop the subject mask to this copy. Now, have a look. Without it, the details are peeking through. And with it, they are not. How amazing is that? So with this technique, we have not only taken care of the hair strands, but also matched the subject. 
with the background. And by the way, if you do want to bring back a little more of the subject's original colors, then just make another copy of the subject copy, which is with the normal blend mode. Press Ctrl or Command J and just slowly and gradually increase the opacity of it. I feel at about 36% is fine. We have brought back a lot and then you can go back and refine the mask of the edges and that's for you to do later. But for right now, this does most of it. So keeping the fun techniques aside, the main point of this video was for you to try the color aware and object aware refine methods. And trust me, they can make a world of difference. I hope this video helped you. And if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe, ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss any other featured tips, tricks or tutorials. I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting Pix Imperfect on Patreon and helping keep Pix Imperfect free for everybody forever. Thank you so much for all your support. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating. Let's make the day a bear and a fun. Growing up is just a trap.